Hey, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today, we have a turntable again. Yeah, let's get back to some turntable repairs after doing an amplifier and a, and a 4K Blu-ray player. We're going to go back to uh, doing what we do best. And on the bench today, we have a Pioneer PL560. Uh, oddly enough, Pioneer had two turntables. They called the 560. There was this one, which is a very heavy, um, heavy-duty, uh, direct drive, quartz lock, beast of a unit from the uh, 70s. And then there was a PL560, which was a plastic piece of junk belt drive unit from the 80s. This is obviously the 70s unit. This unit was brought in because it has a common problem. The auto return does not return all the way back. And it's never been serviced. So we're going to have a look at this. Um, oddly enough, I own this turntable myself, not this model here, the one on the, on the bench, but uh, I have a 560 myself and it is broken and I cannot repair it because uh, there are several chips that have burned out on it and uh, they are extremely expensive or impossible to replace. Uh, I would love to dig into this one and grab the parts that I need, but uh, that would be extremely unethical. So we're not going to do that and we're going to get this gentleman's turntable working great. Uh, but, I mean, when we're in there, I'll show you um, what could go wrong with these units. Um, another nice thing about this table is it can all be serviced from the top, so we don't have to go underneath and uh, take the bottom off. Another major uh, point of pain for these tables is the feet. The feet rot out after uh, so many years. Now, I think this guy's already done the... Uh, aftermarket replacement on this one these are not original so if you have a pl560 there's a good chance uh, or any table in that family there's a good chance that the feet have rotted out okay so let's service the pl560 and i'll show you how you fix a lazy auto return here i'll show you what it's doing uh, plug it in here okay so on this unit you need to press start to get it spinning. It does not start if you move the arm. And uh, I just put it on fully manual, which is kind of nice about this one. You can put it on fully manual or fully automatic, which is very nice. So if we put it on automatic, I think the auto return though will automatically work. Let's see here, even on manual. Yeah, it'll auto return on you. It's just manual start. So there it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, and it stops dead just about you know an inch or so before it hits the armrest that's a very common problem and what it is is uh, on the auto return mechanism there's a little sponge or piece of foam um, and that deteriorates and it uh, it helps pull the arm back so if that sponge is missing um, the the thickness of the of that sponge or foam is the amount that it won't go back so we just have to replace that we'll just cut our own piece and we'll put something on there uh, and i'll show you where that's located all right, so first things first, <clears throat> remove, this is a non-OEM mat. This is some kind of after mat, after uh, market mat. It feels like pure silicone. It's actually very nice. Okay, to uh, pull up the platter, kind of like a technique, you're going to want to put your thumbs and pull up. And it's probably not going to want to come up if it hasn't been out in decades. So... Get the back end of a screwdriver, a few wax, and up it comes. It's a big heavy platter. And then you've got your plate here, and all it does is cover up the electronics. Still on a second charge, by the way. <clears throat> Plug that, lift this up, and here we go. So, some of the things that can go bad on this table, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. The Pioneer PA2005 chip can go bad. The PA2004 chip can go bad. And 
the PD 1003 chip can go bad. This is the motor board. This is, um, it's the speed control board. So this is uh, the oscillator board. So this is what controls your quartz lock and all that stuff, right? And this is the chip that's gone bad on mine. And uh, I've tried uh, an aftermarket replacement for it and uh, I get this jaggedy movement. So anyway, I've boxed mine up and I've put it in storage. I don't really care. I mean, it's a beautiful table and everything, but I just, you know, if, if I get find a parts unit someday, then I'll uh, scavenge it for parts and see if I can get it going again. <clears throat> All right, so the next thing you want to do is we want to service our motor. So to do that, you have to remove this little holding down clamp here. Let's put that aside. And you need to remove this. that and that will this is uh, part of your auto return mechanism it kicks with this little uh, metal piece here that's what kicks it on all right and now this should come up but you got to be really careful you don't want to bend or break the arm over here uh, maybe we should move that yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the head shell. I don't want to bend this. Remove that counterweight as well. And uh, there's two, one, two, three, four hex screws to remove. Those one, two, three, four. Can you guys see this? I zoomed in there. So we're just removing these hex screws. And uh, then there's two more screws you need to remove. This ground. I like to put that screw back in there. And then this holds the whole mechanism to the chassis. This thing has never been serviced for sure. Okay, now this whole arm assembly should lift up. Just like that, okay? So there are some uh, wire clamps here that you just wanna let loose. And that should give you access underneath, okay? So the only reason I'm gonna move it right now is I just want to get it a little bit out of the way so I can pull the motor up and we can service the motor. we go there is a ball bearing in the bottom here I can see it and there is basically no lubrication left on this table so just get a magnetic screwdriver and gently go in there and grab your your big ball bearing it's a big boy there and I don't know if you can see down there pretty well yeah, let's put that right there so it doesn't get lost there is next to no lube left in there that's a dry. Let's leave you zoomed in and I'll clean out the bearing well. <clears throat> so we're on super zoom mode here. So I remember to pull back out. So alcohol on a uh, Q-tip, cotton swab, whatever you want to call it. Clean out your bearing well. Excuse my head. so little oil left in here it doesn't really matter to dry it and 
nice and clean. And uh, we'll zoom out here again. <clears throat> Same thing for the spindle. We're going to use a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel. And we're just going to give that a wipe. Just like that. The ball bearing sets. And as you can see, it's a little bit dirty. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do and what I'm going to use, I'm going to use some SAE 30 non-detergent oil. I'm going to put one drop where the, oops, maybe a little bit more of one drop where the ball bearing sits. That's okay. You know what? It's fine. It'll just dribble down. And we'll put our, bar, our, bar, uh, put our ball bearing back in there. Okay. And now I'll just put uh, a few drops in the well. This one's pretty picky about how much oil you put in. It really doesn't want to go down. That's what I've noticed with mine. If you overdo it, it'll take forever to go down. We'll just let that sit and uh, gently squeeze out any excess oil. And once that goes down, we'll lock it back up with this piece here. And it's definitely taking its time. There we go. It's going now. So while that's uh, going down, let's have a look at this arm. I'm going to get this screw back on so I don't forget to. Right now it's still fighting me here. Okay, well, we may have to remove some. Like I said, this one is really particular about how much oil you put in there. Okay, so there are a few more wire clamps over here. We need to re just release. We just want this kind of loosey-goosey. Audio cables there. Because what you want to do is you want to be able to just lift this up and have a look underneath it. Now, this is a pretty complicated table, as you can see. It's got a lot of stuff going on underneath here. It's fully automatic. It's got a, a pitch. Um, whatever, pitch control uh, with, the, uh, with the window here. You can see how much, uh, uh, if you go manual on the pitch, instead of uh, quartz lock by pulling this up it'll show you how much uh, pitch deviation you have fast or slow on that meter there and uh, there's, there's a lot going on it's a uh, it's a pretty pretty high-tech deck for for its day and age and um, what I want to do also here is um, there are some controls that could really use cleaning and um, just like any other turntable, um, you're going to want to clean the main uh, quartz lock on and off switch. You want to do that one. Um, these are mechanical switches. They don't matter. Um, and your speed selector switch, which is right here. So we're going to clean these with some uh, neutral. Just get, that, get in there and give those a shot. 
that. Okay, you just wanna, you wanna turn that and in and out. Because you've actually got two separate controls here. You've got a, an on-off switch and then your potentiometer, which is a nice Alps control um, for the speed uh, pitch control. So just work that back and forth a little bit. And then your main 3345 switch is right here. And you just want to get a little bit of cleaner in whatever hole you can find. There's not a lot here. while being very careful not to detach any of the wires. Just get a little bit in there. Okay. Just work that up. Okay. All right. Now, where is that little nub? You will see it, it's got a little piece of foam on it. It's kind of hard to miss. But it's also bloody hard to find because this thing is so complicated. So just uh, just give me a minute. I'm gonna just uh, have a real close look at this because I need to put my head over here. And as soon as I find it, I'll, uh, I'll come right back. Hey, welcome back. All right, it's, it's right here. God, it's hard for me to, to show you this. You can see the foam. Hang on. Did I lose it again? Where did it go? Are you shitting me? There it is. Right here. Okay? So if you tilt this out, here's the back of the arm. Here's the back of the table. It's right here. There's a lip. Let me see if I can. Right there. Where's my finger? There it is. Okay, right there. There's a little bit of foam. We're going to replace that, okay? So what you want to do is you want to scrape it. I disconnected the uh, audio cables, by the way. just makes it easier to, to work on. So what you want to do is you want to scrape away some of this. All right, now what you can do, the old foam um, is, was just taped on. Maybe just a razor blade. Just scrape it off. Okay. Just like that. And then you can use a little, sorry if that's out of frame, I just got to get my uh, key cap. <clears throat> All right, so a little bit of alcohol. All right. And you just want to clean that area. in a really hard to get at spot. So just uh, get all the old adhesive off of there. That's good. All right. Okay, so let's just put this like this, stay. So what you want now is, I'm gonna use a little bit of this foam and I'm gonna cut it to size. This one's got self-adhesive on the back, which is nice. So you don't have to deal with the glues. So you just kinda wanna measure it up. 
looks like it's kind of a square. So right about there. And we're going to cut it. Like that. So about that big, yay big. Just uh, straighten it out a little bit. <clears throat> so like that. And uh, it's going to go right here. Let's see how it fits before we stick it down. Uh, I'm a little bit wide. It's actually quite a bit wide. Oops. Come on, stay up. Okay, don't stay up. Just going to trim this down a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Okay, I'm happy with that. All right, so let me sit down here. <clears throat> so we're putting it right here. Peel that. Okay. And then stick it down. Yeah, that's stuck down. That's it. Alrighty. So I've moved some of these wires out of the way here just to make it easier to work on. You gotta tuck those back under. And then you just kind of want to lay this where it belongs. Get your audio cable out of the way first. Actually, you know what? I think I will run that audio cable now because it just plugs in the back here. <clears throat> there. So it just kind of sits right in there. You're going to want to line up this main screw because that one holds it down. And get this kind of big one here <clears throat> and just uh just put it in don't tighten it yet there's a lot of wires and cables that need to be buttoned down including the audio cable like that and then you have this ground cable that we removed goes under that screw. How's your view? Okay. So just put it underneath there. Screw your ground back down. <clears throat> and now you can tuck these wires back in here. Like that. Get out of the way. And these ones here get tucked in behind this one. Just like that. And just get stuff out of the way. Alright, and how's our it's getting better. Still hasn't gone down all the way though, eh? Hmm, I'm not happy with that. I'm gonna actually Just going to uh, pull this back out. Just, gonna just touch that out of the way there. And I'm gonna have oh, the ball bearings in there. I'm just gonna touch it with a uh, Q-tip just to remove just a little bit. Just go in there and just dab that out like that. <clears throat> I'm going to put a Q-tap back on, or ball bearing back in. 
and uh, put that back in there. Yeah, this one's a real pain in the butt. I'm also using a little bit of a more viscous oil than probably the factory used, so that's probably adding to it. But let me uh, let me get this down to where it belongs, and then uh, we'll start buttoning this supper, this sucker up. All right, it took a little coaxing, but we've got her down. And uh, I guess what we'll do is we will uh, continue buttoning down the arm mechanism. So that's an important one there. Then you've got your four hex screws, which go in here. Okay. Now, before we put the big plate back on, <clears throat> I'm just going to put the platter on and I'm going to test the auto return mechanism. So to do that, we have to put this back on. It spins very nice. Okay. Um, I don't think we need to put that back on. Let's see what happens here. Ah, there we go. See how nicely it went back. Let's just see our 12 inch here. Very nice. Excellent. That's what we want to see. And just that little bit of foam, eh? it just pushes it back just that extra few millimeters to have it sit back where it belongs. It's not the end of the world. I mean, you have to push the arm back anyway sometimes, but I know it was, uh, it was bugging me too when I had mine. So, all right. So I'll just lift the platter up. <clears throat> this cover. We got what, five screws here. So I'm putting these screws in. For you guys who have watched my uh, video on the uh, Sony 4K Ultra Blu-ray player, Ultra High Definition Blu-ray player. Um, so all that work I did, um, did nothing. It still freezes. Went on a few uh, forum websites and uh, some suggestions remove the ethernet cable you know do this do that all, all crap that doesn't work right so i did that um another thing i did is i opened it up again and i put a couple heat sinks on a couple of the chips on the board and i played uh a movie with uh the cover completely off so that the drive you know and the uh, board could breathe and uh, it did play through star trek the motion picture no problem but it started freezing on Wrath of Khan again. So, um, yeah, it's that's the way it is. I've got some discs that will play all the way through, but um, those uh, there's a couple discs where it just refuses to, right? So, 
I guess it is what it is. Kind of disappointing, but like I mentioned, how many more years are we going to be playing movies on disc, right? So, but it still kind of pisses me off because it wasn't cheap and uh, it's out of warranty. So, I have to keep an eye out for maybe a replacement board or a replacement drive. Okay, so that's back on. <clears throat> Grab your platter. Put it back on. What on earth was that? <laughs> I just uh, I saw something fly off. The little sure sticker for this cartridge went flying. It's just the uh, the badging for it. Um, let me let me come right back. I'm just gonna put a, a little drop of crazy glue on this and put it back. Okay, we got that uh, that little piece of uh, metallic branding put back on. I also adjusted the uh, <clears throat> cartridge alignment on this deck. Uh, it's a 49 millimeter spacing between the tip of the needle to the gasket on the head shell. And now we will set up the arm. These track pretty light. This is a Shure M95ED. I think they track around 1.5, well they track 1.25 grams from Shure if you have a factory stylus. Aftermarket, I wouldn't track it that light. Um, I'm going to track it at um, 1.5 and to actually do that you have to get the deck running and let it drop all the way down and then balance your arm it's a bit if if you need if you want to use an electronic which we will uh just unplug it while it's spinning that's the only way you're gonna get the arm down you want to balance up your arm turn your Anti-skating to zero. We'll see how accurate the Pioneer weight system is here. Okay, let's see that's perfectly at zero balance. Turn this to zero. And we'll go 1.5. All right, so let's see how close we are. <clears throat> Pretty close. That's very accurate. We'll adjust it to exactly 1.5, which is always fun because these scales can be a little bit wonky sometimes. Like I've moved this several times, it's still showing 1.53. And now we're 1.47, of course. There we go. 1.5. Perfect. Let's just adjust our scale to match. And our anti skate at 1.5. And I'd say this table is done. So we have lubricated the motor. We have. Uh, Use some contact cleaner on the uh, quartz uh, on-off switch and speed. Okay, and I'll show you how that how that works. Actually, let me just plug it back in. And just lift the arm up. So, can you see that all right? Let me just move over just a little bit. Yeah, here's our uh, here's our pitch. Uh, meter here so right now we're on quartz lock so obviously it's dead center so when we lift this up we're going to disengage the quartz and you'll see as i turn the dial it goes past minus six percent and past plus six percent so you probably have seven or eight percent movement for your pitch but if you want quartz lock boom 45 Quartz lock right there. 
and it's instantaneous speed change almost like the uh, the techniques 1200 right so really nice and if we hit cut these are all mechanical switches there we go all the way back to its resting spot beautiful all right how about a quick sound check plug in our audio cables ground turn on our amp hmm, I'm not getting sound in the one channel interesting Test something here. Put on uh, one of my test cartridges here. Oh, I'm getting no left channel. All right, let's uh, see what's going on. Well, just when you thought it was over, right? Eh? So let me get this apart. And we'll run through uh, some checks and see what's going on. Just hang on a second. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I've tested it again. I am getting sound on both channels. Um, this table has a muting circuit on it. So when it's in rest, there should be no sound. Um, when it comes over, right before it drops, the muting circuit uh, disengages and you get sound on both channels. So right now, the table is, is uh, unmuted because it's, it's spinning. So if we turn up the volume, there's sound in both channels, okay? If we cut, it should mute. Let's see. Oh, they could have a very dirty head shell contact as well. I might be mistaken about the muting switch. Like I mentioned, I hadn't, uh, mine's been in storage for so long. Maybe we've got a dirty head shell contact. Let's, uh, let's clean both. Um, a great way to clean this stuff is to uh, get a little bit of very, very, very fine sandpaper. Okay. And just run it over the contacts, like really gently just to shine them up a little bit. Just like that. Okay. Just to remove any oxidation. And then for the inside of the head shell, a little bit of alcohol on a uh, Q-tip. Just get in here and clean the contacts. Oh, it's a little bit dirty too. Well, the cool, the contacts are gold plated. Although quite a bit of uh, gunge came off of there. Let me just. Uh, Clean that as well. Just like that. Let's, let's see what happens now. Really don't want to get an audio situation with this with this table, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, just the left channel. If I hit start, it could be the muting is in, is uh is uh engaged but it's not turning off the left channel so if i hit start gotta hold that down a little bit okay now we got both hmm. 
All right, I don't want to leave it like that. Cut. So I am I'm going to I am going to take it apart and I'm going to go back through it and I'm going to find the muting circuit and clean it. I'll be right back. All torn up again, but for good reason. Uh, here is our muting circuit. So I was not insane. There's definitely a muting circuit on this turntable. So these connections are probably very dirty. So what I like to do is a little contact cleaner right there. That was probably way too much. Get some of that same fine sandpaper. Go between. Just give those a little polish. And we're going to restore good contact, right? Let's see here. All right. Okay, so that's how you clean muting circuit on a turntable. You usually see a couple copper 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 bars like this where they're just kind of sticking out. And you're wondering what the hell are those? Well, that's your muting circuit, right? So, and as this turns, uh, it will open them and disconnect the audio cables. And then when it drops back on the table, um, they'll close again and we'll get signal through it. So. And here's the connector, which just goes right there. All right, I'm going to button it back up. We're going to try it again for a sound check. All right, so let's try our sound check now. So, I just cables are plugged in, tables plugged in. Okay, amplifiers on. So if I touch the needle, it is dead silent. Okay, so really, it wasn't that the right channel, or sorry, the left channel wasn't working. The left channel was muted properly. The right channel was connected somehow. Probably, maybe it was even mispositioned. Who knows? But uh, we've cleaned that now. So when I press start, you got to wait for the click. Okay. All right. So press start. And you hear the muting switch. Right then. And now we have sound on both channels. All right. So let's cut. And uh, throw something on here. Sit there, sit there. I don't have it screwed down all the way yet, so it's just a test. Oh yes, that looks good. Muting. Oh, sorry, I have the queuing up. Perfect. We have sound on both channels. You can hear the crinkly crinkly. Let's test our auto return. Oops. I don't know what happened there. Huh. Oh, I know what's going on. <laughs> I know what's going on. I know what I did. I will guarantee you that little arm is not sitting in the correct spot. And I was correct. This has to be in front of there. Let's try that again. I felt a little bit of uh, I felt a little bit of resistance while I was going to that last track there, and, which I didn't like. Yes, I know I don't have a platter mat on there. I'm just uh, it's a piece of shit record anyway. Oop, have to hit start. Let's 
See how the muting came on after it hit the record? That's working perfect. Okay. Excellent. Perfect. It's working. Good. That's it. We're done. Man, this one was a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, but nothing too serious. Nothing you can't handle. Just, uh, it's, it's an easy repair. So we, uh, also repaired the muting on this one. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to obviously button it all back up, get all the screws back in place um, because the, probably the arm wasn't even centered over the record there. So and anyway, we'll get that done. But that is the Pioneer PL560. Full service on it. Uh, motor, clean all the controls, uh, repair the uh, muting, and repair the auto return. Okay. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Nice to have a turntable back on the bench again. Like I mentioned, it's fall, and usually come fall time, uh, people want to get their turntables done. So this is number one. So here we go. We'll uh, catch you in the next one. Bye.